Welcome back into the Town Me teaching series, and we're looking at in our course, which is BI 210, How to Study the Bible. BI 210 is the number of the course, How to Study the Bible. We continue in this next section, and so far we looked at the issues about how to study the Bible, and we spent a significant amount of time in our last semester looking at know the Word, to know the Word. Now, as we embark and we continue to do so here, we're going to be looking at living the word, how to live the word, and in, in, in it's, within this para, it's within this parameter of how to study the Bible. So let me draw your attention to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, which would be so kind as to open your Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and we're going to be reading down from verses 10 down to verse 16, and we're going to be looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 10 to 16. Let's read the scripture, and as you already know, let me repeat it, I'm teaching out of the New American Standard Version of the Bible, so whatever version you have, you're going to have to follow along with me as we continue to do so, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> and we endeavor to understand the Word of God. Let's read the text. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. For who among, he says, for who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him? Even so the thoughts of God no one knows except the Spirit of God. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us, he says, by God which things we also speak, not in words taught by human wisdom, he says, but in, the, but in those taught by the Spirit, combining spiritual thoughts with spiritual thoughts. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. But he who is spiritual appraises all things, yet he himself is appraised by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he will instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. And as we continue to look at this issue of how to study the Bible, and what we've been doing is actually approaching it a little bit different from most courses on this particular subject, because we have to come to know who is and who has the ability to study the Bible. We know that the Word of God is, this, this book is not just some kind of an intellectual enterprise. Each word has a profound, significant, spiritual truth that has to be applied to you and to I as a believer. So I want to look at, for, in this next section about, and that is living the Word, and I want to look at those who are believers, those who are believers, and, and my first point is going to be that believers can understand. Believers can understand. Now, recently, I was engaged um, in another Bible conference by Zoom, speaking to pastors who were developing all kinds of discipleship programs to get their people into the Word of God. And I commend them for that. But I, I was excited to hear that. And we did a Q&A of question and answer back and forth. And one of the issues that came up is that in many of their uh, discipleship programs where they have people reading the Word of God, uh, were struggling in the reading of the Word of God, in the understanding of the Word of God. And so I just began to scratch the surface just a little bit further, only to discover that they had a good percentage of people whom they were evangelizing, and there's a profound difference between evangelizing and discipling. There's a profound difference, and you need to grasp, and I think you're going to grasp it in this particular section of the study as we continue to do so here today. And what they discovered was that there were many who they were attempting to evangelize by the process of discipleship. And I said, well, that's, that's a very frustrating process because they do not understand the Word of God. And this is one of the biggest mistakes of a lot of church discipleship programs where they attempt to disciple okay, instead of evangelizing the individual because they want them to feel inclusive inside the group. So let's look at this. 
So who can understand this particular study that we're doing, how to study the Bible? Well, first of all, only believers can understand. Yes, only believers. Look, to understand the Bible, okay? And we just read the text here from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, uh, verses 9, 10 all the way down to verse 16. So let's look at this verse by verse. Hmm? Look, because to understand the Bible, a person has to be a true Christian, okay? uh, has to be a true believer, has to be somebody who's truly born again, so has to be somebody who has actually been regenerated. <clears throat> and so you say, well, he says, well, you mean if you're not a Christian, you cannot understand the Bible? Yeah, that's right. That's right. If you're not a truly regenerated, born again believer, okay, if you're not a true, if you're not a true Christian, you cannot understand the Bible. That's right. Look at this. Now look. Let's look at this very slowly. In First Corinthians chapter two, let's go back and look at verse ten. Look at this very carefully with me, because in verse ten, it says. And, 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 and at the very beginning of verse 10, that's why I said, depending on what version of Bible that you have, follow me, follow along with me. But look, at the very beginning, at the very, very beginning, mm -hmm. we find a tremendous insight. A tremendous truth is being revealed to us here. And it says this, For to us God revealed them through the Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. Now look at the first three words. Look at the very beginning of verse 10. For to us. Do you see that? Do you see that? Now, now, now follow along. For to us God revealed them. Look at the word them. Look at it very carefully. Right? He said it refers, the them refers to God's truth. This is what he's speaking about. So now the word them refers to God's truth and God's principles or God's word. But who receives them? But who receives them? Who is it? Who receives the truth and incorporates it in their life? The believer. Look at it. He says, look at it very carefully. For to us God revealed them through the Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, even the depths of God. Look at it carefully. Notice the little phrase, for to us at the very beginning of verse 10. Now that might not seem too important in the English language. Hmm? Right? I got that. But it is very important in the Greek language. Why? Because for to us, look at what he says, for to us, it comes at the beginning of the sentence and it is in what we would call grammatically in the emphatic form. This is an emphatic statement. Paul is saying that the revelation of God's truth is, look at it, verse 10, for to us. And us refers to believers. This is in contrast okay, to the one he has previously been referring to. Now just back it up and go back to verse 9. Look at this. And we didn't read it, but, but I, I, did, I did that purposely because I want you to go back and look at verse 9. Look at it very carefully. Look at it. Because, because what you find here. Uh, okay, what you find here is that he's making a statement here, and it's a tremendous contrast. Okay? It's a tremendous contrast, okay? and I want you to see that okay? because in first in the in the chapter one of okay, uh, of chapter one verse eighteen okay, from chapter one, if you go from First Corinthians chapter one, and you go from verse eighteen, and then you just follow, if you just read it along, and you go all the way down to verse 9 of chapter 2. So chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians, starting in verse 18, and you go all the way to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. In that section of Scripture, he's talking about how ignorant the philosophers of the world are in regard to the truth of God. That's the context. That's the context. You need to, you need to understand the context of what you're reading. So from verse 18, chapter 1, all the way to verse 9, chapter 2, he is speaking about the ignorance of philosophers of knowing God's truth. Now, he didn't say they were stupid. He didn't say they were ignorant about a lot of other things. No, it was regards specifically to God's truth. Mm. So why can't an unbeliever, why, why is it that they cannot know okay, the truth of God? Because in verse 9, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, okay, look what it says. 
But just as it is written, things which I, I has not seen, your eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, and which have not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared for those who love him. Do you see that? I has not seen. In other words, and I think that sometimes in our courses, sometimes we just go too fast. Just, 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 just slow down for a moment. In other words, when he says here in verse 10, in verse, um, uh, in verse 9, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard. Look at this. In other words, he's saying they cannot see it empirically. It cannot be empirically seen. It cannot be empirically understood. Okay? They can't find it out by discovery. Then look what he says in verse 9. He says, he says, and which have entered into at, look at look at it when he says, which have entered into the heart of man. You, do you see that? Which have not entered into the heart of man. This is right at toward the end of verse 9. Okay. And and you can begin to see this. Now, in other words, they can't find it. See, the, an unbeliever, that's who we're speaking about. The they is the unbelievers, okay? They can't find it by their own feeling. They can't find it by, by their own emotion. Um, they can't find it by their own musings, okay? Um, they can't find it by their own spiritual experience, okay? You see, God's truth is available, is not available... I, but let me, I want to put it in these terms. God's truth is not available externally. It is not available externally. And it is not available internally to the unbeliever. No matter how erudite, how scholarly, how intellectual, how well studied he is, okay, the philosopher may be, doesn't matter. He cannot, he cannot, he, he cannot, it's not available to him externally, it's not available to him internally. It's just not. Why? Because God has revealed it, look at the beginning of verse 10. It's revealed, he says, for to us, not to them. In other words, he's revealed it to the believers. So this idea that we see, and is very popular around the world, it's pretty, it's pretty popular where churches um, develop these discipleship programs and they bring in all these unbelievers and they have them reading the word and they're frustrated because uh, they assume that somehow mystically okay, the word is going to capture their heart and their spirit and their mind and their soul. Mm -hmm. No, you see, you have to be born again first. So basically what I'm attempting to do here is to tell you, stop the nonsense. Now look at verse 6. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay? And, and in verse 6, that there are those in the world who speak about human wisdom, the rulers of this age, but none of the princes knew the truth. Look at this. Look at verse 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Yet we do not speak wisdom among those who are the mature, a wisdom, however, not of this age, nor the rulers of this age who are passing away. You see that? The rulers of this age, it's not, that's not the wisdom we're talking about. Well, drop down to verse 8. And look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 8. The wisdom, look what he says, which none of the rulers of this age has understood. For if they had understood it, they would have crucified the Lord of glory. Right? They would not have crucified him. Why? Because this truth is not available to them. Why? Because in their, in their humanness, they cannot know it. Now, stay with me, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and now drop down to verse 11. Look at verse 11. For all, for who are among those, for who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. 
So, if a man does not have the indwelling spirit, the Holy Spirit, he cannot know the truth of God. He may know something about the truth, but he cannot know the truth. Now, he may think he knows some things, and he may even try to figure out some, some things out, right? and he will work at this, okay? But he cannot truly know, at least not, not in the sense of knowing and living out the truth in life. This is the reason why I told you right at the beginning of this, of this hour that I said, we're going to be looking, at, we looked at in our last semester, we looked at the issue okay, about, about the word itself. Now, in this, as we endeavor now in this second semester, we're now looking at how to live the word. And who can live that word? Only the person who knows that word. Look, but, but when we're talking about Christians, but concerning Christians, look at verse 12 very carefully. Now we have received not the spirit of the world. Look, look at verse 12. He says, now we, we, us Christians, okay, have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit is from whom? It's from God so that we may know what? The things freely given to us by God. Now, look at the phrase when he says, the spirit of the world. Now, that phrase inside that verse 12, the spirit of the world, is talking about as a paraphrase for saying human reason. Human reason. That's, that, that's what it's saying. Okay? So Christians, you, I, we do not depend on human reason. You know, what is it? So then what do we depend on? We depend on the spirit of who is of God. Go back and look at verse 12. Now, we have received not the spirit of the world, right? not the human reason, right? but the spirit who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. Do you see that? So only believers can understand it. So why are we trying to disciple people hoping that they become Christians? It, it, look, discipling presumes there is a disciple, and to presume a disciple means that you've been born again. No. So now, we've looked at that. Now let me just kind of flip this coin over. And let's look at this issue, okay? Why believe unbelievers cannot understand why unbelievers cannot understand. Okay? Now, stay with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, okay? Because the essence, the essence of the unbeliever is summed up for us in verse 14. Let's read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. But a natural man does not accept the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually appraised. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. So if you're not a believer, right, mm -hmm. you cannot really perceive with, the, with understanding the truth of God. It's the same analogy in verse 11. Go back to verse 11. Look at it very carefully. For those who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of of the man which is in him. Even so the thoughts of God, no one except no one except the Spirit of God. So no one knows except the Spirit of God. So a man cannot know anything, if we're looking at this, about himself unless he knows it in his spirit. If he doesn't you see, a lot most most people who are not believers don't know themselves because they don't know themselves in the spirit. Listen, let's see if we can put it in another way, okay? And you go, well, what are you saying? What, what, what are you trying to say? Well, let's see if we can put it another way. Let's, kind of just, let's just try to kind of put it in terms that, in simple terms that we can grasp. You know, okay, okay? Listen, a dead man, let's put it this way, a dead man doesn't know anything because... It has no spirit, right? He's dead. He's physically dead. So a dead man, okay, doesn't know anything because he has no spirit. Okay? Likewise, a man without the spirit of God, okay, is like a physically dead body because he doesn't know anything spiritually. 
Now, one prime, if I can put it that way, one prime aspect of spiritual death is the absence of the knowledge of God. That is spiritual death. It's the absence of the knowledge of God. Why? Because of the absence of the Spirit of God. Now, go back to verse 12. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12, go back and look at it very carefully. Okay? You know, I never attempt, and I don't go out of my way uh, to try to insult somebody's intelligence. That's n n never my intention. Here. And, and what I'm doing is I'm slowing this down purposely so you can see what the Word says, not what I am saying. Okay? And so look at verse 12 very carefully. Look at it very carefully with me. Now, we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit of who is from God, so that we may know the things freely given to us by God. Do you see that? Okay? So now, in a dead man, and in a spiritually dead man, the Spirit of God is not within him. So, so, without knowing Christ, you cannot know what the Word of God says. You cannot know the Bible. <coughs> Excuse me. You just can't. I look, look, I, I can speak to all kinds of people involved in all kinds of sects, sects and, and cults and, 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 and false religions, and they will argue till they're ready in the face about what they believe what the Word of God says. And I just mm -hmm, listen to them and I just move on because they're spiritually dead. They have intellectualized and they've created their own truth. That's what's so sad about the cults. Did you want to just say? That is absolutely what's so sad about the cults because they can't, they, you know what they do? They concoct. They invent elaborate theologies, okay? But they don't even know God to begin with and they deny Jesus Christ. Which is why I just, I, listen, all of us have friends and we have acquaintances and we have neighbors and we have relatives and we just, we just beat ourselves to death trying to convince somebody of something that they're not capable of understanding because the Spirit of God is not in them. In order to understand God, you have to have the Spirit of God. So what they're going to do is they're going to engage you in an intellectual debate and drive you absolutely crazy. So what I have to do is just pray for them. Because they're, they're going to frustrate you to no end. Look, you know what they're doing? They concoct their own theology. okay? And confusion, therefore, is just added upon confusion. So you have confusion on top of confusion on top of, on top of confusion, and then the truth becomes the truth becomes hopelessly muddled, is what it is. You see it, and you're frustrated, and you're frustrated that they're not frustrated because they don't see it because they don't have the spirit of God. The truth is only available to those who know and love the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this isn't something new. You know, it's just not something new. This just just happened in the 20th century. It didn't just come about here in the 21st century. This has been around a long, long time. Do you realize back in the 15th century, back in the 16th century, Martin Luther had to deal with this issue, okay? which was part of his frustration. Okay, now, let, let me quote for you what Martin Luther said about this. And just see if you can grasp this and understand this. Let me quote it for you. Martin Luther said, Man is like a pillar of salt. He's like Lot's wife. He's like a log or a stone. He's like a log or a stone. He's like a lifeless statue which uses neither his eyes nor his mouth, neither sense nor heart, until the man is converted and regenerated by the Holy Spirit. And until that happens, man will never know God's truth. Quote, unquote. That's back in the 16th century. Martin Luther had to deal with this problem. And you and I have to deal with it all the time today. Look. So what, so what is the bottom line? The bottom line is that is on knowing the Bible is that you know God through Jesus Christ first. The believing heart will understand God's word. 
But because a lot of them do not have a believing heart, they do not understand God's word. You see, we put the cart before the horse, which is why I just don't engage in long intellectual debates with these people because you're the one who's going to walk out frustrated because you're trying to do what God says that cannot be done. Hello? See, and, and that, in fact, just hold your place in 1 Corinthians. Would you jump with me and go over to John chapter 8? <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> John chapter 8. Look at this in verse 44. Because our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, he makes a profound an absolutely profound comment in John chapter 8, verse, verse 44, when he's speaking to the Pharisees. Look at what he says. He's, now, this is Jesus, the Son of God, speaking to the Pharisees. He's speaking to religious people. Look what he says. Verse 44, John chapter 8. You, you are of your father, the devil, and you want to do the desires of your father. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. Whenever he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own nature. For he is a liar and the father of lies. And then Jesus continues. Then he says, drop down to verse 45. Look at verse 45. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. How many of you are absolutely frustrated? You speak truth and somebody doesn't believe you. And you're just so bent out of shape. Your nose is bent out of shape. And you're just, you're just frustrated. And, and I, I'm trying to help you, brother. I'm trying to help you here, sister. It's because you've not understood. You've become the problem here in this equation. You fail to understand that that person is intelligent, well-informed, but they're not born again. So they don't have a believing heart. This is absolutely amazing. Listen to me. The reason they didn't believe him was because he told them the truth and that was something they could not perceive. Look at it. Look at it. Look at verse 45. But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Because they couldn't perceive it. They couldn't comprehend it. Even though you have, well, let's look at verse, look, and I, you already told you, I'm reading at the New American Standard Version of the Bible. So in that version, I have, let me see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. I have 12 words. Now look at simple words, right? But because I speak the truth, you do not believe me. Yeah. And you go, well, it's this simple. Not for him. Because it requires a believing heart. They couldn't perceive it. And that's why you get frustrated talking to people. And as I told you, we have family, friends, and acquaintances, and neighbors, and people in the street that we say hello to all the time. And they just, they don't understand what you're saying. They don't. They, they just don't get it, okay? okay? Now, that, you know why that is? Because that's the state of unregenerated, it, it, uh, uh, that's the state of an unregenerated man. He's not regenerated. He's not been born again. And, the, and that's the condition of unbelievers. Now, please, don't, don't, don't confuse an unbeliever, okay? Because he happens to be religious. This up, man, the church is full. The churches are full. I don't care what denomination you talk about, what religion you talk about. They're filled with unbelievers. They're filled with people who are unregenerate, and yet they're religious. So if you tell them the truth, okay, they don't receive it because they can't perceive it. Do you understand that? However, I believe there is a point at which an unbeliever... Now, I want to qualify this and just give me a few extra moments here. Because God is sovereign, right? And God moves on the heart of, of, of a person, right? And I believe that there is a point in which an unbeliever will become open to God. Okay? With a searching heart, he says... And you know that God's doing something in his life because he says, Teach me your truth. I want to know if Christ is real. Now you know that the spirit is beginning to move in that person's life. So now, so if if 
quote unquote. If there's an open heart, okay, there's a transition time. There's a transition time when the truth is brought to you and you are regenerated. You are born again. So in general, the natural man will never know the truth when he reasons from his own mind because he doesn't have the Spirit of God within him. Only when he opens his heart to be instructed by God and begins to seek Christ will the truth become evident to him. Then, once he's converted, he's been born again, the Spirit will be within him to teach him the truth that he needs to know.